Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. Today we're talking about multi-KPI comparators and specifically how to make one using calculation groups. What's a multi-KPI comparator, might you ask? Well, I have one handy right in front of you. Here is a visual that allows me to compare many KPIs to many KPIs using the same chart. So here, for example, I'm comparing right now sales with margin percent, where my sales go into blue bars margin percent goes into the red line. Why do you think multi-KPI comparators are important? Well, let's take a look at what the screen looked like before I implemented it. We're looking at a very simple data set that helps us analyze our sales for certain brands over certain channels over time. And here, uh, as you can see, even if I have um, just four KPIs, sales, units, margin, margin percent, by the time I've started adding uh, all kinds of charts to my dashboard, it's very difficult to keep this report to one page or what I'm trying to say is non-scrollable page. So what I've done here is I've created a scatter plot, plot for brands, scatter plot for channels. I have my sales trend, I have my margin trend, I have a new smart narratives visual here. I could have added a bunch of other uh, visuals on this page, but very soon you will notice that uh, I'm starting to get pretty limited by the real estate. The only way for me to add more insight to this page is to make the page longer and to just stack more visuals at the bottom of the page where the user would have to scroll up and down as the user is interfacing with the report. As I mentioned in one of my prior videos, my new thing is to try to build reports that are limited to one page. I believe that uh, these reports are much easier for users to interact with, but it does present an interesting challenge because we always want to have um, more charts. We always feel like there's more insight to present to our users uh, than the real estate of the page allows us to do. And that's why we're using multi-KPI comparator because uh, that allows us to dramatically reduce the amount of real estate necessary to compare different KPIs one with each other. Uh, forgot to mention that this video is a tutorial, which means that I will post this model in my blog. So please look for the link in the description of the video. There you can download it. You could take a look at the model, take a look at the data and take a detailed look at all of the calculations that I've done to make this feature possible. In order to keep this video short, I'm not going to get too deep of a dive into all of the calculations. So I'm going to quickly run through the basic features and spend a little bit more time maybe on calculation groups functionality. So uh, the most important thing where everything starts is our metrics. So I usually put all of the uh, measures in my model into a metrics folder. And through the magic of video editing, our metrics folder has just jumped to the top of the all of the tables, which makes it easier for user to, to find it. And also you could see a little calculator there that indicates that anything in that folder are, is indeed uh, a measure. So here you will see the base measures that we have to implement, which is our sales margin percent and units, as well as margin. And now that we have our basic measures done, it's time to start working on the smart measures that allow us to implement the, uh, the multi KPI comparator to implement this behavior where you could pick a different KPI on the list. And then those KPIs will show up on the, on the chart below. So what comes next? The next we need to create a table that will have a list of all the KPIs that we would like to compare. To make it easier for you guys to, to see, I just pasted the table from uh, Power BI into Excel so you could see um, the contents of it a little bit better. The way I created in Power BI was actually from Excel. I just tapped it in and then pasted it right into Power BI. So our table has three columns, KPI, ID, and KPI format. The KPI uh, column, the first one is select KPI. So that just wants, I want it to be a default value. So if nothing, if the user does not want to compare all variables and just wants to compare one, then uh, the user can just select this and then uh, only have one variable, one measure on the chart. And then I'm listing all of the metrics that I would like to be able to compare and I give them a unique ID. And most importantly, I also specify the format for each measure and that's where the calculation groups come in. Because without the calculation groups, we're not going to be able to format each metric the way uh, we want it to be formatted. So in our case, sales and margin will be formatted as dollars, unit will be formatted as a whole number, and margin will be formatted as a percent. So basically what you would need to do is you would need to create a table that looks very similar to this for your measures, and make sure you just specify the format that also makes sense for your measures as well. The name of that table, in my case, is KPI1, 
And then I may make create a clone of that table and I call it KPI2. And the way I clone that table is very simple. I just go into uh, modeling and then I say new table and I just say KPI2 is equal to KPI1. And then the only other thing I have to do is make sure that I sort my KPIs and I use sort by column and I sort by ID because I want to control the order in which my KPIs are displayed. Why do I need to have two KPIs tables? Well, because I want to have two slicers for those values, for those KPIs. So it's easier for me to just uh, duplicate that table and feed one into the first slicer, the blue slicer, and feed the second one into the second slicer. So the way these slicers are set up, uh, they just use the KPI column that has the KPI name uh, for the slicer field. The next step is you create a uh, bar chart that um, I guess the official name is line and stacked column uh, chart. So, and you pull KPI one into bars and KPI two into the line value. And here you go, you have a nice looking um, chart that allows me to implement, for example, comparison between units and margin, units and um, in this case, margin percent or units and sales and so forth. The only problem is you will see that the formatting for the um, Y axis uh, for those KPIs does not work very well. So basically what happens, um, it's not using the formatting that we've specified in our table. So how do we fix this? That's where the calculation groups come in. Let's take a look at how I implemented that. Almost forgot. Before you build the chart, you obviously need to create the KPI 1 and KPI 2 measures. And these measures look like this. So KPI 1 will use a switch statement, take a look at what's selected in the slicer. And then if, uh, if it's the very first value, which is select KPI, it'll return a blank. Otherwise, it'll return the corresponding measure. KPI 2 looks exactly the same way. Uh, we're only looking at the second slicer, KPI 2, instead of KPI 1. Now we can look into calculation groups. If you do not know how to create calculation groups, I do have a video, uh, like a small tutorial on how to create it. But basically, uh, you cannot do it from Power BI Desktop. You have to install what's called uh, a tool called Tabular Editor and then launch it from external tools. If you don't see the external tools option in your browser, that means A, that you're not in the latest version of the desktop. B, you don't have the Tabular Editor installed. So make sure that uh, you have the latest version of Power BI and go ahead and install Tabular Editor. And while at it, install the Deck Studio and ALM Toolkit. Uh, all three of these are super cool and very important. So now let's see how I implemented the formatting feature. So first I created a calculation group. So you right click, say new calculation group. Unfortunately, it's hard to make um, the items on the left bigger. I will zoom in. Um, but so I've created a utils calculation group. And under that, I created two calculation items. I usually uh, create a calculation item that really does nothing. Uh, I call it as is, and it just returns um, the selected measure in uh, expression. And then in the format expression, it just does select format, select measure format string. So basically it returns the measure formatted as itself. The magic occurs in the second calculation item, which I called KPI. So the KPI will return exactly the same measure that our KPI measure, KPI one and KPI two metrics uh, implement. The, the, um, the cool thing here is in the format string expression. The way you do the uh, format string expression is you find it here in the list, and then you have to click on the little drop down, and in here you could paste in your code for the format string. This is the code that I use in our tutorial. So basically what we're doing is we're gonna format it in the following way. We're gonna take a look at what measure is passed in the calculation group. If the measure is KPI one, then we're gonna use KPI one's table format. So we're gonna go into the table KPI one and look into the KPI format. If it's KPI two, we're gonna pull the format from the KPI two format. And then if it's neither of those, we're just gonna return again, the format measure string, uh, measure format string for the measure that was passed. So how do I make this chart now to be format aware? All I need to do is go to utils and drag name into the filter for this chart, and then go to filter, and then go to name, and pick KPI as the selection. And right away you can see that our uh, chart now has um, uh, dollar signs on the right because that's where the sales go. So let me pick sales on the left, uh, you'll see dollar signs, let me pick margin percent on the right, and you see 
percent sign on the right. And that's about it you have to do. Pretty simple. So if you found this interesting, go ahead and download the, the model on my blog. Thank you for stopping by and please come back soon. Bye.